I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I was having a conversation with one of my viewers, and we were talking about the drive to start doing lots of research, especially about residency and its requirements and options before moving to Nicaragua, and in reality, before visiting Nicaragua and doing some investigation. And we're talking about why that tends to come up as a thing that people want to do and why it may not make sense and some good thoughts around that. We had a really good conversation about it and I wanted to share that with you guys. So I know we're not out for a walk today. I wish we could, but today is my 21st wedding anniversary and pretty soon my wife and I are going to be heading out to the beach to hang out at the Simple Beach Lodge, have a few drinks, watch Ronnie play live, and so I'm getting this video out on the quick side so we can do that. I'm going to try very hard to get out and do some stuff for you guys real soon. We had a great video the other day walking around Buenos Aires that was crazy popular. We're going to work more to do more barrio tours for you. For sure, everyone requests them. I know. We're going to get to that and more right after the bump. When you're looking at moving to any new country, this isn't really about Nicaragua specifically, but there are some specific Nicaraguan points that we're going to bring up. It is normal to put in a bit of time researching what it's going to take to get residency and or citizenship, depending on what you're looking for, what your lifestyle plans are, or what is offered by that country. And of course, it is important to do some cursory research. You don't want to put in a bunch of time investigating a country just to find out that your nationality or just general policies are not going to allow you to live there. But that's very rare. There's only a few countries in the world where that's actually a problem. And often places that you may think are a problem, for example, Americans often think that places like China or Russia are not really available to them, but in reality, they often are, and possibly a lot easier than you think, especially when you're talking about residency. If you just want to travel on a tourist visa, some places are still hard, even though actually moving to and living there isn't nearly as hard by comparison to other places. Typically, residency is more difficult than tourism, but in comparison, uh, those countries, for example, Russia, may actually be easier for residency than an awful lot of places that you can travel to far easily. So it is important to do some cursory research and make sure that a country is an option for you before you start digging into it too much. However, it is super common, and I hear this from lots of people, we talk about it all the time, that they, for example, with Nicaragua, they'll find that it is interesting for a lot of the reasons we talk about all the time, right? Safety, cost of living, weather, general opportunities with other expats and so forth. And so they, uh, before they come down, they start doing a bunch of research. They wanna know exactly what it's gonna take for residency requirements, when they're gonna get them and so forth. And this makes sense, it's totally logical. You're not able to just get on the plane the same day Maybe you are, think about that, but uh, you, you wanna plan your trip, you wanna come down and put in some due diligence investigating things, and in the meantime, you wanna do a bunch of uh, work to see exactly what residency would look like, right? Totally makes sense. This is the natural human compulsion to answer questions as soon as you can. Great, but there's some problems with this. The first problem is that you're putting the cart before the horse and doing a bunch of investigation into the wrong thing. What you really should be putting your energy into is discovering which country, cities, regions, and so forth within that country or region are going to be the things you're interested in. So uh, if you are looking at Nicaragua and you have not yet visited, then the first thing you need to do is actually come down here and visit or research nearby countries that you're also interested in or possibly far away countries that you're also interested in. And if you narrow it down, you know that Nicaragua is a place that you likely want to be, then put in your time researching cities and neighborhoods and learning the map and watching my videos to learn more about it and so forth. If you're really interested in Chile, then find a YouTuber like me and do the same kind of thing there. Ecuador, go find Grumpy Don, watch his stuff, right? One thing after another, you can build up your information about a place in a really useful way and help narrow down your decision making to maximize any research that you're going to do. There are good ways to use your time. But of course, the most important thing is get on that plane and as soon as possible, get to a country because you will not have good information until you've done that. It doesn't matter where you're looking at. It could be Nicaragua, it could be Thailand, it could be Russia. You want to be on the ground, experiencing the food, the weather, the people, the language, everything. And those are going to be your big factors for you making those decisions. The residency requirements are rarely 
major factors. They can be, but they are extremely rarely the, the decision factors that it may feel like they're going to be. A lot of people, especially if you look on YouTube and you're looking for uh, where, who's making a lot of websites and a lot of information about relocation, uh, you're going to find places selling assistance with residency, assistance with citizenship. They're going to be pushing the importance of multiple passports and all these things, all things that specifically take time and money and encourage you to hire someone to help you with that, right? So in that process, there's a big sales and marketing effort going towards convincing you that you want to put your effort into those things. Because going and investigating a country, hanging out at a hotel, sitting by the pool, checking out the local restaurants, walking around the old town, whatever, those things don't make YouTubers money unless you're, you know, picking up one of their guides or something. Generally, they're not going to make money from that outside of you just watching their video. But if they can sell you a relocation package or a, uh, a citizenship process, they have a lawyer to hook you up with, they have a way to make money through that process, and that's what they're going to push in most cases. So watch out for that. Not that a specific person is going to mislead you, but that this general trend of people doing this creates an emotional pressure that you want to do a lot of research on those things as if they're important. They have to portray them as being the critical factors, Because, and you'll notice this, right? Why do you go to Panama? People don't talk about what a great country it is. Like, they don't talk about all these wonderful things, the views, the way the storms roll in, the countryside, the little villages, the big city, the new subway system. They don't talk about that stuff, or rarely. They don't talk about the great cocktail culture that we're missing in Nicaragua. No, they focus on, do you know what you could do with a Panamanian passport? Really? Something that you can't do with your existing passport? Probably not. But, I mean, it's nice to have, but that's a really weird thing to be focused on and totally distracting from the things that matter 99% of the time. But that's what makes money potentially, so that's what people talk about. Watch out for this because you do a bunch of this and it's easy to get into a mindset that you're going to care about citizenship and residency research when in fact they should be the cart, not the horse. What is far, far more important is actually deciding on the country you want to be in, with the rarest of exception. Once you know that you're talking about a country where residency is an option to you, and so if you're looking in the Western Hemisphere, for example, places you would need to research and find out if you could seriously consider it would include places like Cuba. That is an extremely difficult for place for North Americans to move into long term. Still doesn't mean you can't. It just means that would warrant further investigation before you put in a lot of effort investigating the country in other ways. But only so much. Even there, you would still want to visit and know that you want to put in the effort to researching. But other than that, every country in Latin America, the U.S., Canada, and basically everywhere in the Caribbean all have ways that if that is a place that you want to go, you'll be able to with reasonable effort. And the same thing goes for most of Europe most of Africa, most of Asia, Australia, New Zealand, basically the entire world. It is so rare to have a place where you won't have an option to at least be a resident if it's a place you're passionate about. There are some situations where people have income requirements that are so lean that they do limit their options. That is few and far between both on which countries will never consider you and which people have such a tight budget that they can't if you're coming from North America or Europe. Uh, but that can happen. But that still should essentially leave you in a position of you need to know where you basically want to go uh, and research those things. And for those of us who are looking specifically at Nicaragua, this has some of the lowest requirements and the lowest cost of living. So even if you're in the leanest situation, this is still a place you want to be looking at pretty seriously. And you don't need to be worrying about what the requirements are as much as you need to worry about getting here and getting started. So let's talk about these first two points. The first is putting the cart before the horse and doing research on the wrong thing for a couple of reasons. One, you're going to waste your effort. You're going to put all your effort into something that essentially doesn't matter and not be focused on the thing that does matter, which is actually getting into the country and investigating it. And if you say, well, I'm worried that it's not going to be the right thing. I don't know how I'm going to make all these decisions. It may mean you need to go look at a few other places as well. So, for example, if you're coming to Nicaragua, you say, okay, I'm really thinking Nicaragua is for me, but I'm not 100% sure even after I visit, what is my next step? Well, visiting more for sure, move down and spend time for sure, visit places that you would list as 
having similar factors likely to the ones that make Nicaragua good for you, right? Is it cost of living? Is it uh, the weather? Is it whatever? That is it Guatemala? Is it El Salvador? Is it Costa Rica? Is it Panama? Is it Mexico? Is it Bolivia, right? Which things, which countries are going to share the aspects that are important to you? Maybe go try them out, maybe for a, a week, maybe for a few months, right? But generally, you can do that and, and build a, okay, no, I like these different places, but okay, Nicaragua is just that little bit better for me, or Bolivia, just a little bit better for me. Make that decision. The earlier you make that decision, then the better you're just going to be overall. Uh, but the most important thing is, you know, if you're looking at coming to Nicaragua, you got to come here. That's going to make it your decision, uh, your first choice, or rule it out as being your first choice. And that doesn't mean you don't love it. It just means it's not your first choice, right? You only move to one place, your first choice. Uh, so, you want to, to do that and don't get distracted by your residency requirements. It just doesn't make sense. It's a waste of effort. If you come and decide Nicaragua is for you, all those residency requirement research, wasted because you're going to still have to go through the process. If you come and decide it's not for you, waste it because you're not going to use it. So it's essentially never going to come up. Not 100%, but essentially never going to come up that that research into the residency requirements are going to affect anything. Again, people selling services will act like, oh, I chose this country because the residency requirements were a little bit easier. And it's almost always, one, not even true that it's easier. They just said that because who can prove that it's not? And two, they leave out the fact that that's so irrelevant to a person actually moving. So, for example, why is that irrelevant? And especially in a case like Nicaragua. If you move to Nicaragua, you don't come here and have residency ahead of time. In some places like Mexico, you can go get residency without ever going, right? And so that residency is not tied to being in the country. And here, same thing. It's tied to being in the country, but you don't need it to get in the country. You come here, you stay on a tourist visa, potentially for quite some time. You do your residency once you're here and already made the decision. In fact, Nicaragua will be super confused if you come down and don't live here first and try to start residency. They're like, why do you want to be here? What? You don't know the place. What is the purpose of going through this process if you aren't here? Clearly, if you wanted to be here, you'd be here. That's probably should be listed somewhere as the number one step to getting residency in Nicaragua is being in Nicaragua. Like that is what the system expects. All the processes are built around that. There's no anticipation of why you would ever want to go through these steps if you weren't here, because if you're not here, clearly you don't want to be resident. And if you're here, well, you might want to be resident, then it makes sense, but probably only if you've been here for a little while. So they build everything around. It's super easy to come in and visit super easy to stay for long term and super easy to move from. I'm here visiting and oh, I realized I don't ever want to leave. So can I not ever leave? Right. That is what they expect. It is what logically makes sense. And the only reason you would ever do anything else is if the government of whatever country doesn't allow you. Oh, you're not allowed to visit here until you're working on residency. OK, then I need to make some harsh decisions and generally don't move to those countries because you'll never know you're making a good decision. But in general, you go and visit and stay and spend a bunch of time and then work on your residency. And then if you want to move on to citizenship, you work on that after that. It's very logical and straightforward. Forward and it makes sense for you and it makes sense for the country. Anytime someone is trying to do a lot of research about these things or make decisions or attempt to start residency before they're in a country, it kind of sets off red flags across the system. In some cases, it sets off flags to take advantage of you because you're, you're in a precarious position that it's easy to mislead you. But from the country standpoint, it's kind of like when you have an employee who writes that cover letter. It's like, I've never been more passionate about working at a company before than yours. They know that's boilerplate. They know you're making it up. They know you don't know that this is a place you want to work. They countries here, they know that this is not a place you want to live if you're not already here. If you wanted truly to be here, you would be here. So that is is certainly a red flag that you're doing something that doesn't make sense. That doesn't mean that you're a crazy person. It doesn't mean that you're dangerous. It means that they may go through a process of granting you residency just to find out that you were never that interested in the first place. And it was just a paperwork process that you kicked off. And then we'll see if you actually use it. That's not something they want to go through and do. Plus, the residency process here requires you to be here, as is common in most countries, not Mexico, but most countries require your presence for the residency process to move forward. And so trying to do too much when you're not here just doesn't make sense, especially as the information is almost always wrong, not completely wrong, just 
wrong numbers, wrong timelines, bits of misinformation. And that can happen in country too, but it's way less common when you know you're speaking to an actual authentic lawyer who pulls out a license and shows it to you and so forth. That's going to be far more reliable as a process. So also for accuracy, you want to do things in country. All right. And the second part of this is something that people really don't think about. And I think that people just don't believe is really the way that the world works. And especially here in Nicaragua, this is true, but it's going to be true in a lot of places. Once you've moved to a country, you've put in some time, you've decided it's the place that you want to be. You start doing some research, whether on your own, you get a lawyer, you talk to Migracion or whatever, you start to put together the requirements of exactly what it's going to take for you to become a resident. Generally, the way that we think about this is not in getting a list of requirements and meeting them. You want to get an immigration attorney in most cases. You're going to start talking to the government or whoever is appropriate in your particular case. If you're coming to Nicaragua, yes, get an immigration attorney, start speaking with them, and start putting together a portfolio of what it's going to take for you to become a resident or a citizen, whatever it is you're looking for. If you're coming to Nicaragua, that's going to be a resident. So here is the thing that is different. We tend to think about this process as a matter of simply getting a certain number of documents, filing them in a certain way, and following a certain set of guidelines. If you don't meet those guidelines, you won't get residency, and if you follow them, you're assumed that you will. This is a very American take on things, and absolutely nothing wrong with that. The United States and Canada tend to operate as very large places, huge populations. They follow a lot of policy and procedure, because when you're on a large scale, you have to. If you didn't, everything would fall apart. So it totally makes sense, but we're not generally talking about moving to places that are big like that. Now, if you're moving to a China, yeah, of course, they're going to be policy and procedure based. You can expect things to be a lot like the US and in that way. You have to be when you have a billion people. But when you're talking about small countries like Nicaragua, El Salvador, or Bolivia, you're probably dealing with really small departments where there's a lot of flexibility. Creating a bunch of really strict policies and procedures would be counterproductive to the process. They wouldn't have time to accommodate all the edge cases, and they're going to get better results by having some personal evaluation where someone is sitting down and actually thinking about the situation rather than basically running it through an algorithm. What normally happens, and yes, you do want to have some idea of what the guidelines are. You want to make sure that you are somehow, uh, you know, working towards what is required. And certain things are going to be very cut and dry. Like you've got to have an Interpol certificate saying that you are clean. You got to pull your birth certificate, things like that. Generally, these are not challenges for people. But when it comes to other requirements, whether it's an age requirement, an income requirement, an income type requirement, these are things that in most cases you're going to be able to sit down with an attorney or someone who is knowledgeable, maybe sit down with the department that handles immigration, whoever that is for the country you're looking at, and maybe having a discussion. And maybe you're involved with this, or maybe this is where simply having an attorney who can put together a case to put in front of the government is what you need. But in many of these cases, what you have is countries who are not looking for ways to keep you out. If you're living in the country, you've come in, you've put in the time, you've done the research, you have uh, proven that you are serious about staying in the country and you are now desirous that this is the place you want to live, in almost all cases, countries are pretty interested in keeping you. They don't want to get rid of you. You're a perfect candidate for them as best as they can tell. You're passionate about their country to the point where you're putting in real work to do so, and you've invested that time before having residency. So they generally want to find ways to keep you. You've proven that you're going to be, or very likely, going to continue being a good citizen in the country or a good resident of the country. Why would they want to get rid of you under those circumstances? They don't want someone else to come in they know nothing about when they have someone that's good for them already in in place. They don't want to do that. So they are often going to work with you, whether it's helping you get to the requirements you need to have, or maybe finding creative ways to meet the requirements in ways that you may not have thought of, finding laws or pathways to residency that may not be well known and so forth. There's a lot of creativity that is often available to people, especially on the government side, but also on your lawyer side. Your lawyer may be aware. Uh, For example, just as a completely contrived example, you may not uh, qualify for an uh, under-retirement age uh, uh, working income style visa, and you may be too young for a retirement visa, but maybe they're aware of a way that they can waive the age requirement. Or maybe you're able to show a different style of income and they're able to waive a style of income requirement because you exceed what is required in some other way. There's all kinds kinds of things that may be able to be done. And especially in a case like Nicaragua, I would suggest that you 
even if you feel like you're going to miss the mark, you, you don't qualify from your own research, if it's something you're really interested in, you know, take that first step. Make sure that Nicaragua is something you're actually interested in and then work with an attorney, work with someone who really knows what to do to come up with a game plan. Too often, I think, people take it upon themselves to do their own research, pretend that they're their own attorney, do this footwork, and then determine that they are going to qualify or not going to qualify or essentially believe that that is the case on their own, when in reality, chances are there's a lot that can be done that you're not aware of and just not privy to that information. It would be impractical to have every possible path to residency listed on a website. And if you're in a place like Nicaragua, there's no websites with information about this anyway. It's all third party and pretty much all wrong. The one that was sent to me this morning that we were looking at had numbers wrong and some stuff out of date. And the article that it was you know, had in a blog was essentially irrelevant and really just meant to be clickbait, not very useful. And so someone looking at that may have some misinformation, something that talking to an actual immigration attorney would solve in just a few minutes very easily. So I think that in many cases, when people are uh, coming down and doing this research ahead of time, you're doing tons of research and saying, ah, I'm going to qualify here or I'm not going to qualify here. Not only is that research that's often unnecessary because you haven't made a determination really solidly if the place you're looking at is a place that you want to finally go. But also, you may mislead yourself by convincing yourself that you are a shoe in when maybe you're not, or much more likely that you actually could find a path to residency, but you talk yourself out of it because you think you won't qualify because of some wording that's used on some website. And often it's a translation, often it's just one of multiple options and so forth. So the thing that I'm really recommending is is move forward with your process. Don't let paperwork or questions about details be the things that hold you up. If you're interested in moving to a country, get there and spend time. Make your determinations on the ground that it really is the place you want to be. Make sure you're solid on that decision and then find an authoritative or uh, authentic resource, legitimate resource for doing the research, giving you advice and letting you move uh, forward with that process. And someone like an immigration attorney, a real one that's that's, you know, expert in this field who is from that country and has the absolute up-to-date information and access to the right departments, let them tell you what you need to do. And of all the people that I've ever spoken to who have looked at this, first of all, most people just qualify. It's not that hard in a lot of countries. If it's something you're really interested in, if you're putting in the effort, almost always you're going to be accepted anyway. But of those who are struggling, I have never known of someone who'd not be able to meet the requirements because one way or another, the act of being so interested, the act of being so passionate is enough that there's some way to work through it. It doesn't guarantee it's always going to happen, but it is a much rarer problem to face than people believe. Now, if, of course, if you're coming from North America, you're used to a world where they do everything they can to discourage immigration or at least give the impression to the public that they're discouraging immigration because it is not a popular concept. It's something that North Americans tend to be very opposed to. They don't want immigrants coming into the country, which, of course, you have your own discussions about why that's odd and strange and counterproductive. But that that idea that the government is out to provide a barrier and you have to overcome some really strong obstacles to convince them to allow you to become an immigrant or expat in the country, depending on which it is you're looking to become. If you're looking to become a resident in most places, certainly all of Latin America, they're not looking for excuses to keep you out. They're certainly trying to avoid allowing criminals in. They don't want someone to become a drain on society. But if you are honestly looking to come and you want to integrate, you want to be a good participant in the country, you have been here and have a track record, you want to spend your money here, you want to retire here, you want to live here, you want to raise children here, all of those things are generally looked at quite favorably. And they're looking for ways to one, just protect themselves and make sure they're not making a mistake. Of course, that's why there's a process. That's why there's all this due diligence on the countryside. But beyond that, they're looking for ways to smooth the path and make sure you choose their country. They're competing for your residency. They're not trying to provide a barrier and keep you out. I don't think very many people really realize that the majority of the countries in Latin America, majority of countries in Africa, now a lot of places, they don't have a mechanism for this because so few people are looking to move there that there's just no, there's no reason that they would have a mechanism for it. But when you're looking at Latin America, basically every country in Latin America, including those with very low immigration rates like Nicaragua or Bolivia, still have strong uh, tuning within their government rules and laws and, and so forth and procedures 
to make it as attractive as possible for people when they visit to say, I don't think I want to leave because that brings in important revenue, uh, cultural growth, interactivity, um, connections to other countries and so forth, things that are generally pretty beneficial. So they do want to make sure that you're not going to be a bad actor. But once they've essentially ruled that out, once they've done their due diligence and feel confident in you, generally they are looking to convince you to stay. They're in a selling position. They are trying to market themselves to you as a great destination, not the other way around. And that is why you know, this show is so important because even from a Nicaraguan perspective, they see this as an important tool for getting the word out about the country. And these kinds of things are things that are very difficult to tell people about because nobody is really asking these questions. No one's thinking about, do countries really want me? Do they want people in general? Is that a positive thing? Yeah, it's actually a positive thing. And there's a limited number of potential expats in any given region. And all those countries in the region are actually competing for them. Sometimes they compete very hard. Places like Mexico put in a lot of effort to draw them in. Places like Nicaragua may not put in a bunch of active effort, but they do put in a lot of passive effort in the form of making it possible for you to just show up and stay, for you to transfer or, or translate a tourist situation into a permanent residency transparently without ever having to leave the country or do anything weird or having to go back and wait or have a bunch of things done ahead of time. They make this process as smooth and easy and inexpensive and inviting as they possibly can. So Mexico may have an active role advertising, trying to convince people to move down. Nicaragua does a passive. If you do any research, you'll discover it's the easiest place you could possibly want to move to, uh, to be able to get in and stay as long as you're behaving well. They take different approaches, but the end goal for all of them is this is a positive movement for the country. It's something they want to encourage and they're going to do so. so with that mindset, that will help you see why. Don't put the cart before the horse. Don't try to do a bunch of research that isn't gonna help you and may be wrong, easily is going to be wrong. If you want to move to a place, go spend time, talk to the right people, start the process on the ground. And if it's Nicaragua that you're looking at, know that the process is to come first, make the determination, stay long term. If for some reason your residency fails, you will still get a long period of time of getting to live here while you work on additional research, figure out where the next place is, right? Even if, and that is a huge hugely unlikely scenario where you come and stay and fail to get your residency long term. And in some cases, they may use mechanisms that you're not expecting, like look the other way, wink, wink, tourist stays, or all kinds of flexible discussions of, well, if you do this and we do this, that could work out for you. Look for those opportunities. Don't shut the door on the place that you want to move to just because you're convinced that they're not going to let you in. Make them shut that door. Give them the opportunity to make things work out for you, and you will almost certainly get to live in the place that you want to live in. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to join our membership, check that join button down there. It's not a lot of features. It's really just about supporting the channel, but we really appreciate we're getting more and more people doing that. Thank you so much to everyone who's doing that. You can support the channel directly with buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Link is up above. And as always, I'll see all of you tomorrow.